Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we'll cover how to use the Excel Solver tool to achieve an optimal portfolio based on objectives and constraints. In our example we have a portfolio comprising six fictitious securities or assets and we want to use Solver in order to either maximize expected return without any volatility constraints maximize expected return for a given level of volatility, maximize risk adjusted return, or minimize volatility. To explain how our template works, we have the prices of the securities in the price sheet. We have calculated their daily returns in the return sheet. And based on this, we have calculated the annual expected return and volatility figures for each security. We have also produced a variance covariance matrix. This variance covariance matrix helps us to calculate the overall portfolio volatility figure in cell I17. The overall portfolio expected return is a weighted average of the individual securities returns and their assets. Meanwhile, the Sharpe ratio is the expected return minus the risk-free rates, which we assume to be 2%, divided by the volatility. Note also that we have the sum of the weights, which is a constraint which we will use later on. Let's now move to Solver. And first of all, you need to enable Solver. And to do this, you can click File, Options, add-ins you can select go and ensure that the solver add-in is enabled then go into the data tab and select solver in solver there are different solving methods such as grg or generalized reduce gradient nonlinear, simplex lp or linear programming and evolutionary GRG is used for nonlinear and smooth problems, in other words, ones that have objective and constraint functions. This is the default solver method, and we can use it for the purposes of the exercises in this tutorial. As a first exercise, let's maximize the expected return without any volatility constraints. To do this, we can set the objective to cell J17, which is the cell which contains the portfolio level expected return. The variable cells are the weights of the individual securities. And as you can see, these are C17 to H17. So ensure that you've selected those here. And the constraints is B17, which is the total of the weights. In other words, we always want to ensure that the total sums up to one. We can then click Solve. And as you can see, it returns 16.18%. How do we know that this is correct? Well, Security 2 has an expected return of 16.18%, and Solver has assigned a weight of 100% to security two, given that this is the security which has the highest expected return. Since we don't care about volatility in this instance, this makes sense. Next, let's add a constraint to ensure that the volatility is exactly 5%. So in other words, instead of cell J17, we'll refer to cell I17, which corresponds to the portfolio level volatility, and we'll change it from max to value of, and we'll select 5% here. Let's then click Solve. And as you can see, it's given us a portfolio with a volatility of exactly 5% and an expected return of 6.57%. And it's done this, by distributing around about a third in security one, allocating around 14% in security two, slightly more than a third in security three, 
and the remainder in security 5. What about if we would like to maximize risk-adjusted returns? In other words, the Sharpe ratio. But we can enter Solver again, and we can set the objective to K17, which refers to the Sharpe ratio, and we can then maximize this, so we can remove the volatility constraints. Let's then click Solve. And based on Solver, a portfolio somewhat evenly distributed between securities 2 and 3 maximizes the Sharpe ratio. If you remember the expected return we had when we tried to maximize the expected return regardless of the volatility was higher than what we have now, but the Sharpe ratio was lower as we didn't care about volatility. And finally, let's consider the case of a risk-averse investor who would like to minimize the portfolio volatility. Let's enter Solver again. Let's select Min. And this time, let's refer to cell I-17, the portfolio level volatility. We can then once again click Solve. And as you can see, this is a portfolio which is mainly allocated to Security 1, followed by Security 2 and Security 3 to a lesser extent. In our variance covariance matrix, Securities 1 and 2 have a negative covariance, and so do Securities 2 and 3. Therefore, adding assets with a negative covariance will help increase diversification and therefore reduce the portfolio's unsystematic risk. So that's how you can use the Excel Solver tool to achieve an optimal portfolio based on objectives and constraints. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for future Excel tutorials, techniques and examples. Also, please see the description below to access templates featured in the Excel Hub's tutorials.